With this kind of heavy duty build and features for its price, you can never go wrong. Introducing the Yunzi AL80 keyboard. As per usual guys, we'll check its physical overview, tear it down to check its build, test its features and more. We'll tell you everything you need to know coming up. Hey what's up guys, this is Mac and we do a lot of tech related videos like this one. If this is your first time, consider subscribing. With that said, let's begin. So what do we get inside the box of the Yunzi AL80? The keyboard itself, obviously. Extra keycaps for Mac OS users. Two extra key switches. Keycap and key switch puller. USB A to USB C cable around 6 feet and some documentations. First, let's check out the external physical overview. So, the entire body is made of CNC machine aluminum with a sleek silver finish. But you can choose from three available color options on their website. Both the frame and the bottom case are crafted from aluminum giving a solid and heavy duty build. If you are curious about its exact dimensions, then you can check this out and pause the video. The sides Front and back features a clean, minimalist design with no logos or markings, which is much appreciated. On the back, you'll find a compartment for the 2.4GHz dongle, a USB-C input, and the tri-mode connectivity switch. So here's the keyboard layout, featuring all the essential keys for a 75% keyboard design, with a unique placement of the delete and navigation keys. Over here, there is a function knob that is made of CNC machine material and it feels premium. The knob also rotates infinitely with the tactile and noticeable clicks on every turn, and you can also push it to mute. It also features an LCD screen that displays the battery level, date, time, lock status, and connection mode. You can also customize the screen with a static image or GIF, all easily managed through its dedicated software which we're going to check later. The keyboard comes with a Cherry Profile PBT keycaps featuring a clean and minimalist font. I opted for the Gateron Zero linear switches, but you can choose between two switch types on their website. It also features a south-facing RGB lighting and supports both 3-pin and 5-pin switches. Anyway, let's do a quick sound test, shall we? Underneath, there is a glossy metal plate that reflects three different colors when light hits it. Definitely eye-catching. You'll also see four rubber feet to keep the keyboard steady in place and an 8-star screws which we'll be unscrewing right now to check its internal build. Let's start from the bottom. After disconnecting the necessary cable, you'll see two batteries with 3000 mAh each and in the middle is a board screwed directly to the bottom case. Followed by the switch foam, the PCB itself, a plastic layer, the IXP switch pad, sandwich foam, and finally, the polycarbonate plate. So this is a gasket mounted keyboard and here's how it looks up close. The stabilizers are also visible here and they come pre-looped just like the switches for a smoother typing experience. Just one important note to take that the LCD screen is attached directly to the plate. So be extra careful if you're planning to mod your keyboard. I guess that's all for its physical overview, now let's check out its features. I already mentioned most of the features earlier but here are the rest of them. 
This keyboard is hot swappable and it also has a tri mode connectivity with a very stable connection with both wired and wireless. It is fully compatible with both Windows and Mac OS and also has a vibrant RGB backlight with plenty of customization options. Powering all of that is a 6000 mAh battery, so you are not going to be reaching for the charger anytime soon. And of course, it supports QMK and VIA, so you can remap your keys, create macros, and tweak layers to fit your workflow or gaming setup exactly how you want it. I guess that's all for its features but if you want to see more detailed specifications then you can check this out and pause the video. Now let's check out the available software slash drivers, shall we? There are separate software applications for remapping the keyboard and also for customizing the LCD screen. Let's start with the LCD screen since the setup is more straightforward. You can download the necessary driver from the manufacturer's website so just check out the links in the description below. And here's how the LCD software looks like. It's not the prettiest but it gets the job done. So we have three main buttons, the picture set, GIF set, and setup device. In the picture set, you can draw, upload image, and configure image attributes accordingly. The GIF set allows you to upload a GIF up to 160 frames and adjust its FPS as needed. Lastly, the setup device lets you navigate between home page, picture page, and GIF page. Once set up, everything is stored directly on the keyboard so you won't need to run the software every time you want to use it. For remapping, this keyboard is compatible with QMK, but we won't be going into that in detail, as explaining it will take an entire video. The key point is that it works with QMK. So for now, we'll be focusing on testing the keyboard using VIA. If you're already familiar with this, feel free to skip ahead. But for those who aren't, let me walk you through how it works. So the first thing we're going to do is visit this link. Look for the AL80 and download the JSON file. Once the file is downloaded, head over to VIA and authorize your keyboard as needed. Afterward, open the design tab. From there, just upload the JSON file you just downloaded. This will load the necessary keyboard layout for modification. The VIA driver is pretty straightforward. There are 7 sections but for now we'll focus on the most important ones that will help us remap the keys and adjust the keyboard settings. You have 4 programmable layers to assign different functions and switch between them as needed. In the layout section, you can select a key and choose from a variety of options from the basic, media, macro, layers, special, lighting, and custom to replace it with. Simply program the key according to your preferences and you are good to go. Once you have programmed the keys and settings, they are saved directly to the keyboard. This means you don't need to keep the driver running on your desktop. In this way, you don't have to reprogram them if you're going to use the keyboard with another PC. Not only that, but you can also save your settings locally and easily share them with your friends who have the same Yunzi AL80 keyboard. I guess that's all for its drivers and software. Now let's do some wireless latency tests. Now let's move on to the conclusion and let's talk about the things that I like and don't like about this keyboard. I'm really into moving away from local software, especially for keyboard related tools. These days, online drivers like the QMK and VIA are becoming the standard. It would be great if we could apply the same approach to customizing the LCD screen. Well, I was hoping that the LCD screen customization could be done online as well, especially since the manual mentions that the OLED screen is customizable online. But I haven't been able to find anything so far. Maybe this feature is planned for the future update? I'm not really sure.
If Unzi plans to develop an online driver for the OLED screen, I really hope that the interface will be clean and user-friendly, as the current offline software looks terrible and definitely needs a lot of improvement. Well, this is the only downside that I noticed in this keyboard's feature, but I'm sure Yunzi can do something about it in the future. Despite this minor issue, there's a lot to appreciate about this keyboard. Starting from the CNC aluminum build, the case feels incredibly solid and premium, giving the keyboard a really nice weight and a satisfying presence on your desk. QMK and VIA compatibility is another big win. It means you can fully customize your key maps, macros, and RGB, making this board flexible for productivity, gaming, or any kind of workflow you are into. The OLED screen adds a unique touch, not just for aesthetics but also for displaying useful info like layers or battery status. Speaking of battery, the 6000 mAh long battery life is much appreciated. Honestly, when you look into the pricing, with all of these features packed into such a solid build, it feels like it should cost a lot more. It is surprisingly affordable for what you're getting, making it a great value overall. So if you'll ask for my recommendation, well that is a big yes for me. So you should get one for yourself today by using the links in the description below or the affiliate link on your screen. But if you think this is not for you, then check out the other keyboard reviews we have on your screen as well so that's it guys this is mac thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one